The audio you're about to hear was recorded in Anchor. Learn more at anchor.fm. You're listening to Pretty Dece, the bite-sized audio blog about games, comics, movies, and more. Featuring news, reviews, opinions, and impressions. So if you're a geek, we hope you think it's Pretty Dece. What's up, everyone? It is March 28th. Thanks for joining me on Pretty Dece. I'm your host, Josh. Uh, today we're going to talk about The Binding of Isaac as we continue our Nintendo Switch uh, week-long discussion. Yesterday we talked about Zelda. The day before that we talked about the console itself. Uh, today I want to get into a game that uh, was one of the first games to come out sort of after that initial, like, here's the games out for launch, and that's Binding of Isaac. And um, it is a game that is very, very old school and very, very uh, incredibly hard. Um, I had uh, I'd never touched Binding of Isaac before. It's a game that's been out in various incarnations for years at this point. Uh, it's been remade as Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Uh, here we have Afterbirth, which is the Rebirth release plus a couple DLC releases. So this game is not is not new, but we've packaged it all together, and now it's it's new on the Switch, and it's something that I'd really not touched up till this point. I kind of knew what it was and, and knew of it, hadn't really dove into it, uh, but for the Switch, I wanted to finally give it a shot. It's like a good fresh uh, start to be able to try the game out. So I hopped into Binding of Isaac. Uh, knowing, you know, not too much about it other than it was a, uh, top-down, roguelike shooter. That was essentially all that I knew. And, yeah, I found out the game, as I said, was incredibly hard. It is, it is Dark Souls level of hard. You will die in, uh, just a couple hits. Once you die, you're li- all the way done. All the way back to, to the very beginning. Um, you don't carry anything over between runs, so it is a classic roguelike in that regard. Uh, the most you will ever do between runs is unlock things. You will unlock items, you will unlock characters, and uh, you can take those characters into future runs. You may pick up those items that you've unlocked in future runs, but you'll never, you know be accumulating health, leveling up, anything like that. So every run is going to be completely fresh, starting from kind of the same base uh, character, the same, you know, base item if your character has an item. And in a lot of games, I don't like that setup. I don't like games that are that punishing and that hard. Like, I'm not a huge Dark Souls fan. And I was thinking about kind of what the difference between Dark Souls and Binding of Isaac is and why I like... Isaac a lot more than I like Dark Souls and I think in that case it really comes down to the controls. When I'm playing Dark Souls I feel like I'm fighting the controls of Dark Souls and Binding of Isaac, you can hand it to someone it's it's instantly understandable how to interact with the game. You tell them this stick moves, this stick shoots, they're off and running. You don't feel like you are ever trapped in animations. You don't feel like the game is what lost you your life. You always feel like you're the reason that you lost. You didn't move in the correct way, you didn't get the shot off in the correct way, and it's it's your fault. And while that can be very harsh, while well, it can be very painful, uh, it's something that is actually makes it easier to hop back in, makes it easier to do another run and another run, because you feel like any failure that happened, you can fix it the next time because it is all in your control. I'd originally thought that the uh, shooting would be a little off-putting because it's it's four directions. So unlike typical dual joystick shooters where you can shoot kind of in any direction you want in any way the stick moves, um, this you can only shoot, you know, up, down, left, and right. You can't even shoot on the diagonal, which means that to kill enemies, you have to really get lined up very square with them uh, to be able to kind of get your, your shot over to them. And while I thought that would be annoying, the game's kind of designed in such a way that that that's part of the challenge, that it intentionally wants you to put yourself in danger because most of the enemies are also going to be shooting in various patterns that are going to force you to kind of be in in danger as you line up a shot for yourself. So it it becomes not so much of an annoyance, but just a, a factor into the hardness of the game. And uh, it certainly hasn't been an issue so far, and I've kind of enjoyed the the feel of it. You sort of understand where the stick kind of locks in at various spots to start shooting up versus left and and so on. My 
One big uh, downfall for the game so far is that it is so intentionally vague. The game tells you almost nothing about it uh, as you are getting started. It doesn't tell you kind of what the the goal is, really, other than continue down the dungeon and fight bosses. And it doesn't tell you really any way to unlock things. So, uh, for example, I, I, I have looked up some information of the game to understand sort of how the progression works for item unlocks. And, uh, you know, some of them, they're, they are upfront about. So certain characters, they do tell you, you know, to unlock this character, have... 55 coins in your inventory at any one time. So in a run of the game, collect 55 coins, that character unlocks. Uh, but of course for most of the items, there's there's no way to find any of that information out. And you end up finding out that, that there are entire like levels in the game that you can't go to yet because they unlock later on. Um, so the main character of course is Isaac, and Isaac originally starts with no item. He has nothing when he starts off. But I looked it up later on in the game. Uh, Isaac will start with an item called the D6. And the D6 is pretty powerful. It lets you re-roll a, an item that you find so you can try for a better item. So once you kind of know what some of the items do. However, to get the D6, this is just a little example of how uh, kind of vague this game is while also being extremely complicated. To get the D6, you have to find it. You have to, you have to kill Isaac. Uh, yes, Isaac is also a boss in the game, apparently. And you kill Isaac in the cathedral. The cathedral is a level that you can't access when the game starts out. And to unlock the cathedral, you have to kill Mom's Heart, which is the sort of end boss at the beginning of the game. Not once, not twice, but but nine times. And after that, you have to, of course, be doing this as the blue baby. You have to kill Isaac originally as the blue baby, which is a whole other character. So... There's this arcane set of steps that that the game does not spell out to you. You these are things you have to either stumble upon via infinite number of hours of playing the game or or look up some guide online, which is what most people are doing. Uh there are entire websites for devoted to item descriptions even. When you pick up an item, at best it'll have a couple of words explaining what it does. It sometimes won't even have that much. It'll have some sort of flavor text. And you don't really know what it does, which is part of the um, part of the learning experience of the game. You're supposed to try and item out, figure out what it does, remember that for the next run. But it can also be very, very frustrating as you, you know, if you don't have a lot of time to play a game and you don't want to, you know, completely mess up a run because you forgot which of the items was which. So that is sort of a, a big trade-off. The game is, is very, very vague. It's very old school in that regard that it rewards you just sort of pounding away at it and trying to figure out its uh, its complexities. However, I will say the game, I've been playing it a lot. Uh, I've been completing run after run. <laughs> and I've I've been dying over and over again. Uh, I really I haven't even beaten sort of the, the main first boss yet uh, after the first five levels, the, the mom's heart. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just barely scratching the surface, but I've been unlocking some characters. I've been unlocking some items. I've been learning some of the different, uh, movements and mechanics in the game. And I am really, really liking it. Um, there is this, this addictive, just one more run quality to it. Cause the run, the runs are fairly quick and you are seeing new things every time because they're all procedurally generated. You're not going to have the same dungeon layout every time so you do sort of just keep going and going and going and after a while you've played the game for hours instead of the the minutes that you had originally intended so you know i don't know how deep i'm going to get into the binding of isaac but it is a game that i would like to keep playing and will definitely keep keep uh keep hammering away at even though my skill level maybe isn't isn't the highest uh but i will say that i think the binding of isaac is pretty decent so thank you for joining me on Pretty Dece today. Uh, thanks for taking the time to listen through the station. If you liked what you heard, please favorite the station on Anchor, and uh, you can hear us first thing every single day. Uh, if you would like to follow the show on social media, we are on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at facebook.com slash show. You can find uh, all of the random musings that we might put up, links to the show, links.